your render time suck? Or have you run out of VRAM, encountered optics or CUDA issues and blender crashes? Like me. Let me show you how to handle all these issues if you are not gifted with an RTX 4090 or other high performance workstation like me. In my previous videos about rendering, I received many questions about my system specs. So let me address these questions. I have a laptop with an RTX 2060 with 6 GB of VRAM and i7-10875 and 32 GB of RAM. It's far from what a professional workstation should be, so I'm familiar with these issues. That's why I use Unreal in some cases. If you want to stay in Blender for any reason and use cycles, let me show you my render settings to avoid waiting endlessly for renders or encountering GPU crashes and issues. Firstly, ensure you have enabled the right GPU and disable your CPU. I don't know why, but it's often faster without it. Set your render engine to cycles and GPU compute. Now let's talk about sample count and noise threshold. The time limit is probably not relevant. We all know the standard settings aren't always necessary, but there's no golden rule for the best balance between performance and quality. Many people increase the noise threshold too much, leading to more frames with noise to remove during rendering. There is a workaround to increase the noise threshold to 1 and render with a maximum of 128 samples at higher resolutions. Mm, I talked about it in this video here, where I figured this out by accident. But that's very individual and it's not a solution in every case and a no-go for commercials. It sacrifices some detail. If you tried this and it's not a solution for you, stick to the default 0.01 or maximum 0.02 and reduce the samples to 256 or maybe 512. Sometimes even 64 or 128 are enough. The same applies to the threshold value. Sometimes you can increase it to 0.05 or even higher, especially in brighter scenes with less contrast. It's also worth trying to disable the threshold, but that's up to you and your project. In 95%, you need this setting range. Only sometimes you need more samples than 512. Keep this in mind. Next are the light bounces. There is a pretty simple answer to this. Generally, set them to a maximum of three, maybe four, except for volume and transparent, which depends on your scene and specific needs. For overlapping transparent objects, set the transparent count higher than the actual number of overlaps to avoid optical issues. And for volumetric and smoke effects, adjust the volume count accordingly, balancing detail with render time but one or two should be enough. And zero if it's not needed. Also play with this volume settings. Higher values causes in less detailed smoke, but decreases the render time of volumetrics by a lot. And by the way, if you have overlapping decals or other transparent stuff, like me in this scene, deactivate everything except camera in the way visibility in the object properties. Otherwise, you will have shadow and shading issues no matter what you try. But you still need to set the transparent count higher than the actual overlapping transparent objects. That's all my settings I touch for my projects. There are a lot of other stuff that affects the render time in a direct way, like subsurface, scattering, caustics, and so on. But this is based on your project, and if you need it, you have to deal with higher render times. But there are more options you need to check if you run into GPU crashes and issues like out of VROM and CUDA Optics illegal address shit. What I tell you now don't affect the render time directly, but it also reduces the calculation time of each frame, so you also have the effect in the final render time. First, take all your textures, except normal and displacement maps, 
and convert them to JPEGs. This is so underrated because your GPU needs to load all the textures, each frame. And don't worry, you don't need to convert it separately by your own. Check out websites like imageresizer.com and move to the bulk resize section, drag and drop all your textures, select JPEG as your preferred file format and you are good to go. Aside from that, it makes sense to think about your texture size. 4K textures are just useful for close-ups and maybe high-resolution commercials. Everything that's three or more meters away of your camera and still uses 4K textures is just a waste of time and resources. I would recommend in a real-world size setting 0 to 3 meters 4K, 3 to 10 meters 2K and everything that's further away should have 1K or 512 S resolution. This website does this also for you. That's enough to create crisp and clear 4K renderings. Reduce the polygon count of your objects using the decimate modifier and instead of duplicating with Shift D, use instances with Alt D for identical objects. Adaptive subdivision can also help with geometry tree heavy objects. But the standard settings for this are pretty much overkill for mid-game systems. But simply increase the dicing rate render to 4 for example and it should work fine with still awesome results. First I tried to reduce the max subdivisions to 10 or 8 or whatever but this still causes in out of VRAM or other crashes with much less detailed subdivisions. The dicing rate render is your way to go. The higher the number, the less memory and time the calculation needs. And select your camera here to avoid geometry issues in animations. If you still encounter GPU crashes, organize your scene into collections and use holdout or indirect only option to hide parts of the scene during rendering by keeping indirect lighting and reflections. Then combine the layers in the post-processing. Blender Sequencer or DaVinci Resolve are a good option for that. But lastly, decrease the camera calculation distance in render view to save resources on distant objects. Everything that's further away won't be loaded or calculated. This makes much sense if you have a large scene, but your camera moves in a way where it's useless to calculate behind buildings and other objects in your scene. These are the key settings and tips for achieving stable, high-quality renders in Blender within a reasonable time each frame. If I missed anything, feel free to mention it in the comments. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.